Major cyclone Ilsa still powerful inland over Western Australia on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 14th. Cyclone Ilsa, despite making landfall around nine hours ago now, or a little bit less than that, is still a Category 3 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, but is weakening gradually, and the remnants of Amang are still present on the western coast of Luzon. We are still code red for Cyclone Ilsa right now. 48 days until Atlantic hurricane season, and a fascinating little spirally thing just moved into the coast near... Uh, Alabama and Louisiana not long ago uh, looking very interesting on radar but wasn't a tropical cyclone and wasn't ever going to be uh, but interesting nonetheless the remnants of Amang there located off the western coast of Luzon very little cloud cover associated with it and we have an area of interest now 30% chance down in the South Pacific so chances are uh, fair for that system potentially uh, through the southern Solomon Islands and then towards New Caledonia. Then of course we have Cyclone Ilsa which is still a category 3 storm probably with winds of around 115 miles per hour 185 kilometers per hour sustained with higher gusts still at this moment in time. It made landfall earlier on as a strong category 4 on the Sapphire Simpson scale category 5 quite easily on the Australian scale. Over the rest of the southwest Indian Ocean, pretty calm and quiet. Let's check satellite imagery and take a look at the last few hours. You can clearly see the mark of Cyclone Ilsa even on a worldwide view. Uh, and looks like the rainfall has really dropped off actually as it moves inland there. So that's some good news. It doesn't look like it's going to be a major uh, rainmaker, at least compared to other cyclones. A few areas across Africa there with lots of rainfall right now. Here's some rapid scan floater imagery from the Himawari 9 satellite. Uh, the storm continuing to move southeastwards and look at its structure. That long and that far inland, it is still looking pretty decent. And that's why the rate of weakening isn't particularly fast. It's just about to completely lose that eye in its core now. So we expect that more substantial weakening will begin shortly and it will drop down below uh, hurricane equivalent status probably by uh, the next 12 to 24 hours by this evening Australian time. There's the radar as it just uh, flits out of uh, range from the Port Hedland radar site uh, and it still held that eye all the way through there until it vanishes off the edge of that radar there. Philippines looks like this, just a few little areas of cloud really, um, still just a little bit of circulation left from Invest 90W which was named Amang by Pegasa. Sea surface temperatures look like this, up around 30 degrees in the area south of Mexico in the eastern Pacific, the rest of the ocean's got some catching up to do though. In the Atlantic, temperatures are really starting to rise there. If you look back to our bulletin maybe about a week ago, there's a massive change compared to what it was like back then. Really warm now in the Caribbean Sea, entering the loop current and the Gulf Stream there, almost up to the Carolinas, one or two spots of 26 degree waters now. Same can be said for the North Indian Ocean. Bay of Bengal really warming up right up to the coast of Bangladesh now in the Ganges River Delta, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius easily. Temperatures still holding on a little bit longer in the Southwest Indian Ocean, still got around 28 degrees Celsius waters around Mauritius and also in the northern part of the Mozambique Channel. Around the coast of Australia, of course, it is still extremely warm, even after Ilsa, it it hasn't made that much of a dent in those sea surface temperatures. Still 31, near 32 degrees even, off the coast of Western Australia and in the Gulf of Carpentaria. In the South Pacific, temperatures are still warm, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius in the southern part of the Solomon Islands, northern Vanuatu and just off the northern coast of Fiji. Warm pool now extending up to Taiwan from the coast of the Philippines as well. And you can see down in the deep tropics there, very warm sea surface temperatures. 
slightly above average in the deep tropics of the Western Pacific, well above average in the Coral Sea and the South Pacific where that new system may be forming, although <clears throat> the models still aren't very uh, keen on it right now, even though uh, the GFS was very uh, aggressive with it a few days ago, it's now well off the boil and in fact it's the ECMWF model that has it a little bit stronger than the GFS on the latest runs. Uh, oceanic heat content looks like this, still quite a fair amount, especially in those uh, lower latitudes, uh, extremely high amounts in northern Vanuatu and towards the southern part of those islands, it's still moderate. Western Pacific really starting to get a bulk of red areas now in the Philippine Sea, looking pretty decent, um, and in the Eastern Pacific, a good little area for it there as well, which is more than what could be said for even the peak of the season last year. GFS then takes the storm Ilsa inland, off it goes eastwards and you can see there it curves back towards the north again near the end of that uh, as just as it dies off completely it almost makes it back into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Uh, JTWC were intimating that as well but look towards the right there this next system which will be uh, sauntering around that region there and curving southwards around the uh, New Caledonia region uh, struggles to form though it has to be said on that forecast and this is the rainfall expectations over the next seven days and you can see that clear swathe of rainfall from Cyclone Ilsa there but it does start to drop off relatively quickly and it is a small swathe of heavy rainfall it's more going to be the winds of the higher concern I would imagine in this area maximum rainfall expectations now nearly seven inches there that's just over 150 millimeters and that's uh, a little bit old as well that's a little bit behind where the storm actually is already but look off the uh, Pacific region there <coughs> warm uh, conditions will obviously spark lots of convection and moisture and lots of rainfall uh, 17 inches there that's at sea overland maybe getting up to around 12 inches 300 millimeters in New Caledonia and possibly some isolated spots in Vanuatu from this potential storm system in the longer range, day 5 to 10, we're still looking at this Western Pacific system that may or may not decide to make a go of it. Uh, and there it is moving northwest with extremely broad now on this GFS forecast. You remember for several days that it was forecasting a typhoon out of this. Well, it's gone now. Um, and that's why never put your eggs into one basket when we're looking at one particular model run. We only show that just the GFS because I don't have the other worldwide models available in this viewer, sadly. That's the only reason. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode there and taking a look at all our products including full season and individual storm animations on request. Also are still waiting for Hone t-shirt which is much more impressive than what we're about to see next because there is no silly range again tonight. GFS doesn't have anything up on the model uh, on the forecast on day 10 to 16 I'm afraid so nothing to laugh at tonight. You can talk about it all though on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13. Uh, I know we've had many Aussies followers recently. It's nice to have you on board. Feel free to join our server for Tropical Weather Chat. On this day in, in 1985, two Category 3s were active at the same time. Elissa Onina, uh, famous for its name more than anything, and Margo in the Australian region. Both Category 3s on this day. Elissa Onina peaked on the previous day, yesterday, as a Category 4, and that's where the picture is derived from, where it peaked. Uh, in the, I think, around middle hours of the day on April the 13th as a Category 4 with 150 miles per hour. Back to today, and we are still code red, probably for only a little bit longer. The first name in the Atlantic is Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, of course, next up is still Hone. 15 storms so far this year and it's been quite uh, remarkable so far with Freddy and now this Western Pacific next name is Sanvu North Indian Ocean it's going to be Mocha and in the southern hemisphere now the next name in the Australian region is Jasper the southwest Indian Ocean Fabienne and in the South Pacific it will be Lola that's if we get to see any more activity. We are getting close to the end of the season, but we'll be back with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.